One of the original reasons why I got on social media was because ultimately I knew that I wanted to be a voice of trusted opinion for my patients. Unfortunately, over time, I've seen that social media can also be used and continues to be used during this COVID-19 pandemic as a source of misinformation. So in this video, I wanted to go through some information about face masks. I'll briefly review the difference between N95 masks and surgical masks, as well as new literature that's coming out about how the coronavirus is potentially spread, as well as what that really means for both healthcare professionals inside the hospital and the general public living their day-to-day -day life. For anyone new to my channel, let me reintroduce myself. I'm a first year cardiology fellow and board certified internist. So the first thing I wanna do is explain how we as physicians take new information and make guideline recommendations from them. Even in my short career, there have been multiple reiterations of blood pressure guidelines. Overall, however, these recommendations are based on published research, literature, and science. With regard to the face mask wearing recommendations for the general public, we've unfortunately had to not only use the science behind it, but also the supply and demand mismatch that we have for these masks. I think acknowledging that issue, that we are making these recommendations based on not just the science, but also the mismatch between the supply and demands that we have for these masks is at least a step in the right direction. We need to combat misinformation and distrust between the medical establishment and the general public. And if we don't explain the reason behind our recommendations and at least acknowledge the, their pitfalls, we're gonna lose trust long-term with the general public. No patient should ever have to wonder. Does my doctor have my best interests at heart? Now let's get into the difference between N95 masks and surgical masks and who should be wearing each one. N95 masks are the ones that are really gonna be used inside the hospital by healthcare professionals. N95 masks help filter out 95% of particles less than three microns large. They combat airborne diseases and they prevent the spread or inhalation of viruses that are so small that they actually stay in the air for an extended period of time. These are viruses like varicella or chickenpox, as well as measles or tuber and tuberculosis. Check out this super old timey video from the CDC in 1966 describing the process of spreading tuberculosis. The independent air conditioning system moved air through the patient's rooms, then exhausted it through animal exposure chambers in the penthouse. The study sought to answer two questions. First, whether animals, if placed at a reasonable distance, can be infected by breathing air contaminated with droplet nuclei produced by patients with open TB. What they found in that study is that the mice did in fact get infected by that air. And the way that it happens is that when tuberculosis is coughed up by an individual, those particles are so small that they actually hang out in the air. And that is precisely what we mean by airborne spread that these little particles hang out in the air despite someone leaving the room. Viruses like measles are incredibly infectious because they're spread like this. And this is why N95 masks are so important, because they prevent this type of spread of a virus. Now in the news, you may have heard that the virus is able to become aerosolized. This is not the same thing as the virus intrinsically being able to be airborne. The study that found this was published in the New England Journal of Medicine. Researchers were experimentally able in a lab to take the virus as a droplet and put it into a process and become aerosolized. This visual was posted in the New England Journal study and I'll post a link to that study so you can look at it yourself. But the summary is what I want you to look at is up top, A, time of viable titers. What they found was that the aerosols were able to be found airborne up to three hours later and the virus was also able to be found on various surfaces from hours on copper and up to days on stainless steel and plastics. And the reason why this is so important is because inside the hospital, there are a lot of procedures like ventilation, non-invasive mechanical ventilation like BiPAP or CPAP and nebulizer treatments that can uh, potentially aerosolize the virus. And that's also precisely why N95 masks are so critically important. Now, N95 masks work through a few mechanisms, the most obvious being filtration of small and large particles. N95 masks are also constructed with electric filter material meaning that they also have an electrostatic attraction for some particles. All of this helps filter out very small particles that are airborne. Now, unfortunately, we simply do not have enough N95 masks, even for every healthcare worker. 
People in New York are being forced to use these masks for up to a week at a time, where normally on a day-to-day -day basis in non-pandemic times, people use a different N95 mask for every patient. This is a huge reason for why the general public should not be using these N95 masks, because we need to prioritize them for healthcare professionals. Now, a lot of people will argue, you're saying that you're gonna use an N95 mask, but I shouldn't. Why not? This answer has two parts. First, it's the simple fit of the N95 mask. Every single year, healthcare professionals have to be actually fitted for this mask. No piece of equipment is gonna work if you don't use it right. Additionally, you have to be trained in order to take it off appropriately. Touching the face mask that contains the viral particles will contaminate your hands. That can propagate the spread of the virus even more. Now let's postulate an imaginary scenario where every American has an N95 mask, knows how to don and doff it or take it on and take it off. Would that be an effective strategy to prevent the spread of this virus? And the simple answer is that that would maybe help if the virus was airborne. But regardless, the number one thing that the general public should be doing is social distancing. Going out in the public wearing an N95 mask is much worse than not going out in public at all. The simple fact is that we already don't have enough N95 masks for healthcare workers. The number of deaths of US healthcare workers is troublesome. No healthcare worker should ever have to go into the hospital and worry for their own life. And we simply cannot afford to allocate any to people outside of the hospital. Now let's take a look at the new CDC recommendations of the average American being recommended to wear a cloth face mask. Cases on the rise, the CDC now shifting guidelines, calling on everyone to consider covering up. One small study looked at 21 different people who coughed twice into a box, and then the researchers tested the efficacy of various types of masks. With no surprise, surgical masks were the most efficacious, but not too far down the line were masks made of vacuum bags. Later on down the line were masks made of cotton, t-shirts, and silk. This video of someone sneezing, I think, really epitomizes why we're asking everyone to wear cloth face masks. We want you to prevent this from happening, from getting particles all over other people, from preventing asymptomatic people who might not even know that they're sick. And I think we have a growing number of people that we probably have in the population that are asymptomatic and are able to spread it from doing so. Now, as I've reiterated earlier in the video, there is still a shortage in N95 masks to the point that physicians and other people in the hospital in high-risk scenarios are being asked to wear an N95 mask for their entire shift, as well as wearing a surgical mask on top of it in order to extend its, life, its lifespan. Again, these are masks that were meant to be disposed of in between patients, not to be used for an entire shift, and certainly not for an entire week. So part of our prior recommendations were truly from a logistics and supply and demand issue that we simply didn't and still don't have enough surgical masks for everyone in the country to be wearing them. We need to continue to prioritize those for healthcare workers and individuals at high risk. The study that I just reviewed kind of showed that these cloth face masks aren't perfect. They're not gonna prevent permeation one way or the other of all particles. That's why you have to do this in conjunction with social isolation. I want to implore the general public that these face masks are not a replacement to social isolation but they should work in conjunction with it. So how do we move forward from here? Let's summarize what we've learned so far. N95 masks are in critical shortage and healthcare professionals are already rationing them. Those should strictly be for healthcare professionals. Surgical masks are also in a critical shortage. They're also being rationed in many hospitals across the United States and we need to prioritize them for healthcare professionals. So what else can we do? A lot of people have been making homemade surgical masks. I think these are great for the general public and I implore everyone, regardless of if you have any comorbidities, if you think you're high risk or not, even if you think you're asymptomatic, to please wear a face mask when you're going out in the general public. A few tips for wearing these cloth face masks are the same tips that we use as healthcare professionals in the hospital. When you put the face mask on, make sure it has a snug fit. It only works well if you avoid any large crevices where air can get in or get out. Additionally, avoid touching. If you get anything on your mask and then you touch it, you're just gonna be getting it onto your fingers and being able to spread it further. When you come home, take it off, wash your hands, and place that in the laundry immediately. 
These should be used once at a time and exchanged every single time you go outside. Again, otherwise you're risking spreading that contamination around your home and back to yourself or to others. If you're a healthcare professional or if you think you want to donate to a healthcare professional, unfortunately, these cloth face masks aren't valuable for people who are working inside the hospital. Any healthcare professional can use these outside the hospital, but they're really inadequate for people at high risk when they're inside the hospital. So please, wear these face masks when you go out in public. I know that we change our rec recommendations and we may not always explain it as thoroughly as we should. And I think we as a medical community need to do better about communicating with the general public in order to sustain a lasting trust between the general public and the medical institutions that, we t that care for them. This pandemic is serious. Healthcare professionals are dying across the country, across the world. And I think by the end of this, we're all gonna have our lives touched by someone who we know who lost their life. If you wanna help contribute or have N95 masks or surgical masks that you wanna to donate to the, your local hospital, there's a link in my bio down below that is to getmeppe.org where you can donate supplies responsibly. Additionally, you can use that similar link to donate financially if you choose to.